Once you've got Explore Learning pulled up and you've clicked on the Nuclear Decay gizmo, you're going to want to launch that gizmo. Once you've launched it, it should just pull right up and then it's already set in Alpha Decay and Uranium. So your job is to figure out what's going to happen to this uranium nucleus when it undergoes alpha decay. You, know, you can hit this play button and it will show you. And you can pause it at any time if you want to see more clearly. You can also hit refresh to start over. So if we look at that alpha particle, what is it made up of? Here's the alpha particle right here, this little wiggly part. What is it made up of? We can see that we've got two purple subatomic particles. Those are protons. And two white subatomic particles. Those are neutrons. Right? So that's what's making up an alpha particle. So if this whole particle leaves the nucleus, what will our new nucleus look like? How will that affect the atomic number? and the atomic mass of that new nucleus, the nucleus that is created at the end of this whole process. So you're asked to answer that in two ways, right? How will the emission of the particle affect the atomic number and the atomic mass? Um, so, and then what will those new numbers be? Which means you kind of need to know what they were for uranium to begin with, right? Here's our original uranium. So our original atomic number was, oh sorry, atomic number was 92 and our original atomic mass was 238. So our new atomic number and atomic mass look, will be 234 for the mass and 90 for the atomic number. Let's look at why, right? That um, alpha particle has one, two, three, four, large subatomic particles in it, right? It has four total protons and neutrons. That means that four things that have an atomic mass of one have left the nucleus. So of course our atomic mass is going to decrease by that same four. And when we write this equation, we show that right here. Do you see now we've got this nucleus, that, this new nucleus that was created, but also here are the other four subatomic particles in this helium nucleus. A helium nucleus is the same thing as an alpha particle, two protons, two neutrons. So we use the same symbol for an alpha particle. The atomic number, since we lost two protons, goes down by two. Right? And here are those two right there in the alpha particle. So when we look at an equation like this, we need to make sure that we've accounted for every single neutron and proton that we started with. We started with 92 total protons and look, 90 plus two, we still got 92 protons. We started out with a, a total mass of 238, 234 plus four, we've still got 238 for our total mass. Right? So now once you've um, completed this part, it's gonna ask you to do a couple more, right? Go on and do um, oh, I have to hit reset, sorry. Go on and choose polonium and then radium. These boxes right here, if you click write the equation, are the same ones you see on your sheet. Um, you can click show equation to check your work, but please do the work yourself first to make sure that you understand and you can do it. Or so that you know what your questions are when you come to class tomorrow, right? These boxes are for the complete symbol, atomic mass, atomic number symbol. Once you've finished all of those, then you can move on to the beta particles because beta decay is different. Right? Beta decay, of course, is going to release a whole different particle. It's going to release a beta particle. So your first question is asking you what is a, um, a beta particle and what is happening to the neutron when that happens. When you play it, do you notice they're highlighting that one neutron? They're making you watch that. Whoop. Right? What happened to it? That's your first question. And then what was emitted from it? That's your second question. If we watch again, we'll notice that this neutron went from being a white neutron to a purple proton. 
And it did that by emitting that negative little particle, that negative electron, which is really the same as a beta particle. Right? If we look over here, electron and beta particle, notice they have the same symbol. That's because they're essentially the same thing. So when the neutron that's neutral lost that little negative piece, it became a positive proton. So we can think about how this is going to affect the atomic mass and the atomic number. Carbon, we started out with carbon 11, so 11 total subatomic um, sub particles in that nucleus. At the end, we still have the same 11 subatomic particles, right? So our atomic mass hasn't changed. And our little beta particle is so small that it really doesn't have a mass. It's not big enough to have mass, just like an electron. However, carbon only had six protons, but one of those neutrons turned into a proton. So now new, um, sorry, nitrogen has seven protons. We still need our sides to balance, right? We need to have 11 total um, subatomic particles, like protons and neutrons. We need to have a total mass of 11 on both sides. 11 plus zero, we do. We need to have a total of six for the atomic number, six protons over here. But nitrogen has seven. Fortunately, this little beta particle has a negative one for its atomic number. So seven plus negative one would get us back to six. That's because if we put this little negative particle back into nitrogen, if we combine these two back into one thing, that nitrogen, that extra proton, would absorb that beta particle again and go back to being a neutron, back to six protons, right? So um, go through, look at iodine, look at sodium, try to write those formulas, um, I'm sorry, those equations so that you're ready to go when I see you again in class.